Teachers, what's the darkest thing you've seen from a student? I had a student run in front of the school bus because he said he would rather die than go home. I also had another student touch an electricity outlet and try to shock themselves on purpose. I had another student tell me about his mother constantly getting into fights with neighbors. The mother ended up threatening the landlord with a knife. Police got involved. They were kicked out of their home. And they had to move schools. But this same student would also come to school super tired and would sometimes sleep up to 3-4 hours in our classroom. He told me he was tired because he was in charge of feeding his baby sister and wasn't getting enough sleep at night. I asked my students to write a narrative fairy tale using common literary archetypes, which I had extensively taught. I had a girl write a story about a young girl whose mother repeatedly sold her for demons to use. My mom needed magic potions but the demons would only take the young girl's secrets as payment for the potions. Eventually a hunting party found the young girl and rescued her. After a long search, they returned her to her king of a father and she became a princess. And later, I learned that my young author had spent two years in foster care while they tried to find her father. She left that part out of her fairy tale. I had a schizophrenic student who accidentally left a manifesto of sorts about the things the voices told him to do on his desk. It gave me nightmares. Assigned a horror story to the students, and was pretty lenient with the requirements. As long as it didn't have outright gore or gratuitous violence, it was fine. These were 6th and 7th graders so I assumed they wouldn't go overboard if I blocked off typical blood and guts. One of my brightest students wrote legitimate existential horror. The main character found himself in heck, because he committed suicide thinking he was worth nothing. Then, after a long, and well written, discussion with a demon about the reasons for his suicide, found heck to be too boring to bear, managed to kill himself inside heck, and wound up in another plane, simply dubbed nothing, where he would live the rest of eternity as the nothing he always envisioned himself as. I'm honestly very worried for that kid. 7th graders rarely write about topics like that in such vivid detail. You could tell he'd pondered ideas like suicide and heck in extreme detail for someone his age. I really hope he's okay. Not a teacher, but someone who currently works with children. Earlier this year I spent a lot of time volunteering in local organizations, mostly shadowing child protection workers and although my expertise is children, they worked with older kids teens. These kids took a liking to me and learned to trust me quickly. It wasn't long before one by one, like falling dominoes I was exposed to a lot of their self-harm scars. About 3 inches or 4 inches long patches on their arms of deep scars. Old scars. New scars added that morning. Over the couple of months I was there, that became a norm as they opened up more and more. The one that really struck me was this 13 year old suicide note. He wrote it during a major episode. I personally think he suffers borderline personality disorder but obviously I couldn't say anything. And couldn't remember a word of it. So he asked me to read it and tell him what he wrote because he couldn't face it himself. At that point I had become so desensitized that I didn't have the ability to cry. Instead I just drove home in deathly silence. Kid seemed down and I asked him to please tell me what was wrong. Not today, but when you're ready. I was his last class of the day and he promised he would. End of the year comes and he told me his brother killed himself. He said he thought about the same many times but always remembered that he had made me a promise. I made him promise to call me if he ever thought he might again and he promised me again. He's doing amazingly well and is about to graduate from college. Doing amazing work. Recently lost a best friend to mental illness and makes a world of difference having someone like you in their social network. When I was still in college I was shadowing in a room with students with severe behavior problems. They were around 8-9 years old. One student looked me in the eyes and said the voices in my head are telling them to kill you. The teacher in charge motioned for me to move away and then told me to leave for the day because he would do it. But she had just gotten back from having a broken clavicle. I've been reading these answers for over an hour but what the heck. I can't imagine how horrifying it would be to have a child instill that kind of fear. I hope the teacher is okay and the kid got help. Not a teacher but I remember in grade 3 a kid at recess would spend the whole period locating different bugs to dissect them with his hands. A nice enough guy aside from that but it always made me feel uneasy seeing him do that with such intrigue on a daily basis. Hope he became a surgeon or something and not a serial killer. 
I had a former student stab his two stepbrothers yesterday. Also both former students. One died on the scene. The second died today in the hospital. The student had always been troubled. He was your typical screw off kid. Definitely never expected this from him. However it's not surprising. He had been arrested for drug related offenses since high school. This time he tried to break into his dad's house. His stepbrothers tried to stop him. And he murdered them. Completely senseless. At first I thought the behavior I observed was normal but I was concerned with the frequency. I'm a para. And I often take my kiddos to inclusion. Specials. Class within a class. Act. I would often have to redirect distractor reg ed kindergartner from masturbating in class. I reported this problem to her classroom teacher. Who said a report has been made to CPS because that teacher, other staff and even classroom parents have witnessed the same thing on many occasions. A few weeks the teacher updates me. My concerns were valid. Her behavior was a result of sexual abuse. The mom was TMI with our school's principal, nurse, and the classroom teacher, making sure everyone knew the perpetrator was from the child's paternal side. I had a student who was waiting in the staff room to speak to my desk neighbor. The discipline teacher got a really weird vibe off of him and he had these empty eyes like a shark. My co-worker had a long conversation with him that I could only make out a little bit of, and he sat there completely disinterested, kinda staring into the void. So when he was dismissed, I asked her what had happened. She proceeded to tell me that he had basically been running a campaign of social and physical torture against another kid in his class. Spit on. Beat. Made to do his homework. And other typical school bully stuff of course. But he also forced the kid to strip to his underwear between classes and tried to encourage others to point and laugh. Because Japan, the classmates just pretended it wasn't happening. The little psycho called and texted him constant demands and even made the kid do his laundry. It was like he was trying to break him down psychologically. I told my co-worker I wouldn't be surprised if he murdered someone someday and she nodded very gravely. Not a teacher. But I went to an old ed school after getting expelled from a traditional high school. There were two moments that really freaked me out. One, I lived in an area of California where the primary gangs were around. We only had bloods on site until a member of the Nortonus got transferred in. The first day was mainly just a lot of red trash talking him. The second day he was pretty bold. He left his backpack open during recess and my teacher claims to saw something funny. Turns out he had a fully loaded revolver and was supposed to kill the other gang members at some point that day. Cops came and took him. Don't know what happened after that. 2. We had a motivational speaker come my senior year. This one girl, S, was always extremely quiet. I think assembly was to cover some self defense stuff. I don't honestly remember. He said something around the lines of remember if you ever think your life is in danger to get help. S started laughing hysterically. Like... Everyone staring in total confusion. She couldn't stop and they removed her from the assembly so the speaker could finish. Saw S again a few years later and she looked much more put together. Turned out that she had been abused and it caused suicidal ideation. She was doing some intensive therapy for a while. Got into a safe living situation. All those things. I was happy for her. But I don't think I'll ever forget that laugh. It was joker level excessive. P.S. Before anyone asks... I got expelled for a boring reason. Technically not a teacher. I taught little kids how to play soccer as the assistant coach. There was this kid I'll call E. This guy was in elementary school. Like first or second grade. But he had this slightly off putting vibe for the whole season. I just ignored it and did my best to coach him but one day during practice he walks up to me and says. When I grow up. I want to be a serial killer. And you'll be my first kill. I told the parents what he said to me and I can't remember what they said since it was quite a few years ago but I do remember that they didn't seem to care all that much. The weirdest part is that he acted fairly normal, but just had the off vibe. The comment he made was so out of nowhere that I was completely shocked he would say something like that. I'm pretty sure he moved away or something because I haven't heard from the family in forever. Even so, I still kinda feel paranoid about what he told me. On a lighter note, it's my 18th birthday today and I haven't been murdered yet so I'm doing pretty well so far. One time when I was teaching a US history class in prison, 
Some students were asking how abortions were done before it was legal, so I mentioned a few methods and finished with, then there's the age old method of accidentally falling down the stairs. A student at the back piped up, as serious as could be, that one still works, it saves 5 grand but costs 12 years. This is written like a really dark joke. My wife said the darkest she's seen so far is a kindergarten kid telling his mom he was going to kill her, his mom, and the mom shrug it off like it wasn't a big deal whatsoever. It was shocking at first but I got used to it because it was a continuation school. This student would show up high on H while his baby mother was in the other room with the moms and their babies during caregiving. I am a 7th grader teacher. Shortly after Christmas break I had a student in my class call in a bomb threat one day. He made the call while skipping class to make an unauthorized bathroom break with a few other students. He thought he was being smart by making the call over the net through a VPN. We went on lockdown for the day. Local police brought out dogs to sniff. It was chaos all day. Somehow, the call was traced. Since it was a school threat, DHS got involved. They traced the call through the network and routed it back to him. At least, the kid was already on probation and just had his ankle monitor taken off. Last I heard his father was refusing to post bail for him. He may still be sitting in the JDC. High school teacher. Our first writing assignment of the year for seniors is a college admissions essay, where they have to write about an obstacle they overcame to make it to where they are now. One of my senior girls turned in an essay about being drugged and gang raped at a party the previous summer. Said essay also included how therapy was helping her and how the boys who raped her were being prosecuted, but that was rough to deal with. Parents were super nice and supportive but suggested she find something a little less intense to write her admissions essays about. First day of school, I pick up this little girl from kindergarten to do a one on one session with her because she has a learning disability. She introduced herself adorably and then goes on to unknowingly describe a grudge match style melee that took place the night before that involved her dad and the police inside their house. Tables breaking, yelling from all directions, cops everywhere. She was so young, I think 4 year old, so she didn't even realize what she was describing to me. She was smiling the whole time. This was the first kid I picked up that day. Welcome back. I'm a teacher of kids with emotional disturbances and behavioral difficulties. I've normalized the dark crap they do. There was one kid that was next level though. He was 9. Could not be around other kids. Had to put him in a room by himself with a teacher and a teacher's aide in the name of providing education. The room was essentially a cell. There was nothing in it and you couldn't get out without a key. The boy was extremely violent. He wasn't able to wear shoes because he'd hide razors and weapons in them. He had the lining of his pants, shirts etc. And stitched because he'd hide weapons in there too. He'd try to cut our wrists with them given the opportunity. We had an expert come in who advised us to wear long sleeves so it wasn't a visible target. He started going for our throats. When he didn't have a weapon he'd throw feces at us. He was horribly verbally abusive. Sometimes he was okay and calm though, he had pet lizards that he loved, and a vaguely disturbing YouTube channel where he showed himself petting them. Too hard, but he was obsessed with them. The age of criminal responsibility in my state is 10 and we were really just waiting until then so he could go to prison. He ended up attacking his siblings too often so his dad moved with him to a farm. I don't know what's happened to him now. I answered a question like this before that took off a bit. And I have so many stories I don't even know where to start sometimes. One of my kids smiled while pushing a child down the steps of the playground. He also would kill any bug he'd come across even squeezing the worms we got for them. After speaking to the parents they admitted to him running down a sidewalk and straight up stomping on a frog. We quickly acted and thankfully after a couple of months of empathy practice he was fine. It was one of my best accomplishments to date. Wouldn't say it's the darkest thing but it was upsetting to me. I'm an early childhood educator and I was working in an infant toddler room and had a child who was the epitome of love me or I'll scratch your eyes out. We had to watch her around our youngest kids as she would grab them by their necks and squeeze. If one child decided they didn't want to play with her she would bite and scratch them. Once I was changing a child and couldn't leave the changing table to separate her from hitting and kicking the other children. So I had the other kids come as close as they could to me. 
The little girl then took a book and while looking me dead in the face tore that book to crap after I'd asked her to stop. I asked for help from my co-worker and she refused to help me. After that I kinda threw in the towel and whenever I could ask not to have her in my group as we clearly butted heads. <laughs> group of 13 14 year old boys held down another boy in the locker room and sodomized him with a pipe. The girl came to the teachers and said a boy in the 8th grade was decapitating bunnies, kittens, etc. And leaving the headless corpses on her doorstep for her and her family to find on the way out the door. A dude even posted about it on the gram. This happened around 10 years ago, so the details escape me now. I had this one guy in freshman university English. He was vocal about being Christian and tried to steer almost every conversation towards faith and whatnot. Pretty overbearing about it. Sometimes, one day at the end of class, I noticed that someone had left their notebook behind on their desk. I figured I had better make sure it got back to them, so I looked for a name. Nothing on the outside. So I opened it up. There were all these explicit stories about sexual violence, dominance, degradation, humiliation, etc. Written in the first person. Some really disturbing stuff. After flipping through it, I finally found the owner's name. You guessed it. The hyper-religious guy. I didn't know what, if anything, I should do about it. So I just left it and noped out of there. And nothing was ever said about it. From my whole life spent in the Christian scene. There is no one more fricked up than Christian teens and young adults. My friends and their wives are into some extremely kinky crap. We had a kid who climbed the railing of the longest staircase in the building and kept threatened to jump because he wanted to die. He ran from the police when they came and ran across a busy street without looking or stopping for cars and nearly died. He was back at school the next day like nothing happened. I quit soon after. I sat stunned while a student masturbated inside his pants, looked at his hand, and wiped it on his pant leg. It was an 8th grader. I was a 21 year old substitute. I taught middle schoolers for a summer ad camp. It was a high end STEM camp for kids. This kid P was really young for this class. He was 9 and did some really good work when it came down to it. The usually super happy go lucky kid one day comes in looking super down. So I ask him how he is doing. He said that his younger sister Jay didn't like the eggs he made this morning and didn't want to eat his cooking. I told him it's okay that she didn't want to everyone had their own tastes. It's awesome that he knew how to cook. He turns to me and says yeah I cook because mom and dad usually aren't home and sitter isn't always around. I asked what he meant by that and he said that his parents are often out of the country, sometimes for long periods of time, and the babysitter they pay for is only from after school to bedtime. I asked how he and gets to camp and he said the neighbors drive him, but when they don't answer the door he ubers. I almost cried then and there. I told my boss about it and she handled it from there. I don't know what happened to that kid but I really hope he has all the love in the world. I had a student my first year teaching who I would often catch blank starring and even mumbling to himself. This student had an IEP that stated he had a hearing issue and I always chalked up the odd experiences to just that. That was until one day I caught him blank staring and then heard him say something. Couldn't make out what he said. I asked him what was going on and he told me the black man was telling him to kill again. Now as a teacher this obviously triggered several red flags and I immediately prompted for clarification. I said what man? And what do you mean kill? He said the man in black and he wants me to kill. At this point my heart was beating out of my chest and I asked him where this man was. He stated the man was in the room and was looking right at us. After scanning the room and realizing no one else was in the room I asked him to describe the man. He said he had no features and was just like a black shadow. He said he saw him all the time and he always told him to do bad things. It was at this point of being terrified I asked him to walk with me to the counselor's office where I could find someone to handle this problem that was outside of my expertise pay grade. I walked him to the office and told the counselor the entire story. It was at this point where she said I know that one freaks me out and explained he has a long medical history of mental disorders. I was like are you freaking kidding me? Why would this not be included in his student profile and why was he in class with everyone else? Why do you not tell the teachers this? I had a million thoughts racing through my head. I explained that this was serious and I didn't feel comfortable having him in my class or the school as I think he needs serious help. 
Long story short it got escalated up to the principal and eventually he was gone for several months to what I learned was a mental health treatment center. He did end up coming back and even returned to my class and was a lot more talkative. He really seemed to like me and explained that his visions and voices went away when he was put on medication. It still creeps me out to this day remembering that blank stare and terrifying words. A student told me he had been to 35 schools. Every time he did something terrible his parents changed his school. The day before he asked me to help him turn himself in, he had tried to rape and kill a litter of kittens he killed them all and his brother walked in I, him. He planned to go home and to murder his family unless I helped him to call the police on himself. He said I was the only teacher he had ever had, who was not afraid of him. How I got him, was that he had tried to stab a lit girl for calling him ugly. He was stopped. Three days later he returned from suspension with a gun, intending to kill the then principal. My own boss, told me I was forbidden to read a CM folder. I heard this directly from a kid from our school program and while it may not be dark it was still strange to me. Had a 5th grader, at the time, who recently transferred to the same school as his little brother, 2nd grade at the time. They both had the same mom but different dads, yet had the same last name. Not the same as mom though. One morning the big brother talked about his family. I will list it out to make it easier to understand. His mom and his dad got together and had him. Things didn't work out so his mom ended up sleeping with his dad's other older son, his half-brother. She later has a kid with the older half-brother. This kid became his younger half-brother nephew and he was the half-brother uncle. It was the wildest thing I heard from a 5th grader. I wasn't sure if it was true or not but I felt like he had no reason to lie about it and I didn't want to question the mom about it since it was literally none of my business. This kid however did have some emotional issues and got so angry that he said he wanted to bomb the school when no one was around. Had a student banging her head on the wall at nap time and trying to scratch at her eyes saying I'm gonna stab my eyes out. I'm gonna stab me eyes out and nobody will even care. 5 years old. Child is doing much better this year considering. After several diagnosis, some medicine, and a change of environment home wise. So. Not a teacher, but I have one event that sticks out. Back in 1997-1998 I had this math teacher. He was old then, he had retired but because there was such a shortage of math teachers he came back a tough to few classes. So he was an awesome teacher just about everyone loved him. So after a bit he told us about his life. His wife of 50 years has passed away so teaching got him out. Also at 18 he was a ranger in World War II. He brought in pictures himself back then, still had his old uniform. You would not have guessed this because he was just the nicest person. However, there was one kid in our class that just did respect him or any teacher for that matter. You know the kind of kid that would just mouth off all the time for no reason. Just mean. He was big and used that to intimate others. Anyway sometime right before the end of the trimester, my teacher had enough. I don't even remember what set him off. But he went over to the kid and told him to stand up. I think the kid was expecting to be sent down to the principal or something. But no. The teacher said, something to the effect of, when I was killing Germans, I didn't use a gun unless I had to. It's too loud. Number. I came up behind them and stabbed them in their heart. It was at this time. He not only said it, but demonstrated it. He grabbed them kid from put him hand over his mouth and using a pen in place of a knife went and stabbed at the kid's heart, stopping just in time. Then he told the kids, I used to do that to boys not much older than you, except I respected them. Just think about what I could do to a boy like you. After that the kid sat down, pale, didn't act out again the rest of the trimester. Well, I, that's one way to do it I suppose. What a guy. Not my story. But a friend of mine worked with special needs children in a troubled area. Because she was young and female and the children were troubled. Male teachers had to walk by her classroom every 20 minutes to make sure she was okay. One day she went to copy something. And the male teachers wouldn't check on her in there because it was a public space. She was raped by three of her students. All 11 years old. What the frick. Darkest thing a kid has done teaching first grade and I gave the kids a fun little drawing activity. I gave them a coloring sheet of a house and they were going to color it in and write in the appropriate name of each room. 
Lil Eric drew two people hanging naked from the living room ceiling. One of them was dead while the other had a look of shock on her face and was pee herself. The murderers were standing to the side. One was nonchalantly taking a swig from a bottle while the other was taking a drag from his cigarette. What's this a picture of Eric? Eric started happily waving and clapping his hands. The bad men murdered my naughty parents. Hey he. Look. I'm taking a bath up in the bathroom. I looked up to the bathroom and saw Eric taking a bubble bath and smiling in the tub. Um. Darkest thing I saw from a kid related to family. My first year I taught kindergarten and we had a beautiful girl named Freya. Freya wanted to be friends with everyone but if she thought anyone was insulting her or accidentally touched her she would slam them to the ground. Choke them out. Give them a black eye or bite them usually it would be a combination of those things. But well after doing some investigating it turned out that Freya was learning these behaviors from her father. Turns out Freya's father regularly beat her mom. Well after doing some investigating it turned out that Freya was learning these behaviors from her father. Turns out Freya's father regularly beat her mom. I work at a school and I hate how common this is. Had a kid who, by the age of 7, was taught be her mother to inject her, the mom, with H and Nalox alone. That girl took care of her little sister who was 5 years old. They lived with that crap for ages. Fast forward to approximately the age of 12 and the mom takes her two daughters to a hotel to prostitute herself for cash and buy drugs. She shoots up in the washroom and ODs. Unfortunately she locked the door so the daughter who could have helped her couldn't get to her. Apparently when the EMTs got there the door to the room was open. The youngest kid was wandering around the hotel. And the older daughter was screaming I can fix it. I know how to save her. Mother died. Kids went into foster care. Daughters ended up separated. The eldest daughter started selling drugs in 7th grade, started bringing knives to school, and got violent toward others. She openly stated that her career aspirations were to be a drug dealer or a stripper. Two beautiful young girls, totally fricked by a piece of crap mother and absent father. Another one, our art teacher had an Arab student make a life-sized AK-47 out of clay and state that it was practice to kill all the whiteies. He didn't last long at that school. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.